Coming up on today's show, we have an excellent recipe for stuffed peppers, the easy way. That's all coming up on Cooking Crave. Hi, I'm Rhonda Fitterer. And I'm Lover and Didi. And we have a recipe that you found for, it's almost like a lazy man's stuffed peppers. Right, and it's made in one skillet all on top of the stove. So, I it mean. so quickly. But it tastes just like stuffed peppers, so you oh, got. And it's great. Yeah. Easy yes. and tasty. And then, and then Alice Ducart submitted a recipe for some pumpkin crunch. Yes. And oh. I, think, I think I know what this recipe is, and it's very tasty, especially if you like pumpkin, so. It is, and this is the time for it. Absolutely. So to, to make these recipes along with us at home, just grab a piece of paper and write down these ingredients. You're gonna need olive oil, a pound of extra lean ground beef, a medium onion, three bell peppers seeded and diced. You're gonna need two cloves of garlic, a 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomato, 14 and a half ounces of chicken broth, or make your own, like mom always does. Yep. Eight ounce can of tomato sauce, two teaspoons beef or chicken bouillon, two teaspoons Worcestershire sauce, which is called the W sauce, a teaspoon of Italian seasoning or oregano, a cup of wong, wong. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's rice, it's wong. <laughs> That's a combination of white long grain rice. That's wong. <laughs> and one and a half cups of shredded cheese. And that's just like you said, all in one skillet. Uh, yes, no baking time or whatever. You can have this easily in, you know, 40 minutes. Well, whatever. it's a lot of ingredients, but it, it, again, it's just one skillet, so right. it's not going to be too hard to make nope. there. And for the pumpkin crunch, you're going to need a large can, 29 ounces of pumpkin, a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk, a cup of sugar, three eggs, two teaspoons of cinnamon, and a half teaspoon of salt. So pretty good. Oh, and there's probably a cake mix in there, right? A yes. yellow box of cake yellow mix. Yellow box of cake mix, and before it's cup butter and some pecans, and that's only a choice. You know, I love nuts and stuff, so we're gonna top it with some pecans to make it a little extra crunchy. Well, you're a little nutty, Ma, so that <laughs> stands to reason. <laughs> okay, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> okay, let's get started. All right, we're going to start uh, to mi uh, mix up our um, pumpkin crunch first because we do need to get that in the oven. It bakes for uh, 60 minutes at 350. Okay. So, and your job is to spray the pan. Okay. All right, I'm on it. First of all, it, the three eggs that we're gonna put in. We're gonna put them in first because we're gonna beat them a little bit before we add the other ingredients. Um, so, because like I said, it's three eggs slightly beaten. So don't go to the extra work of um, putting in an extra bowl and beating them. You do that first. Okay. So we got three eggs there. We'll put that in our mixer and just whip that up a little bit. And it says a 29 ounce can of pumpkin. Okay. Now, I usually don't have the big can. I always do the small can. So we're just going to use two small cans, which two, they're 15 ounces. So it's just, you know, an ounce more than what a 29 ounces. So I think we're going to be fine. I don't think you're going to, anybody will notice. No, you won't notice. So we're going to use that. And if you're buying a can, buy the big pumpkin. I mean the can. But you know, come, uh, the season, you uh, you have pumpkin on sale quite a bit. Yep. And it's usually the 15 ounce and stuff. So we'll just get that beat up a little bit more. Okay, so we're so this is a nice variation of of like a pumpkin pie. I mean, it's it's more of a dessert, but right. It's you know the cake, the crunch, you know it's. But you just, you still have your wonderful pumpkin taste and, uh, you know, that crunch on top but without probably the extra calories of, you know, our crust. But not that that isn't good. I'll take either one. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. Okay. So we got one can in there, so we'll put the other can. Right. 
And, you know, there's, I buy usually what's on sale, and when you're putting it in uh, a dessert or mix like this, it doesn't have to be a specific brand name, you know, you just, it's going to be good no matter what. So, got that. Then we're going to add a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. Okay. And evaporated milk, you know, which I did, I shook the can really well before I did open it. You know, it does settle a little bit, so you always want to shake your evaporated milk up before you oh. pour it out. Yep. All right, good tip. And then one cup of sugar. So we have that. And then we have like about a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay. There we go. And two teaspoons of cinnamon. Put that in there. Okay, so we want to blend that all up here. We don't want to put the mixer on too high pretty quick, you know, fast, <laughs> or else we'll have full, we'll have everything all over us. So we just want to get that blended well. And we're going to, um, I've got three-fourths cup of butter here. Okay. So we're going to want to melt that. Okay. So we're going to just put that in the microwave and get that melted. All righty. So we'll just put that on for like a minute. And we'll come over here again and, whoop. <laughs> you know, I can always start out <laughs> slow and then it goes whoosh. See? So this is what I said don't do. <laughs> okay. So I just want to get that scraped because a lot of that cinnamon is up on the side of the bowl. So here we go. We just have to wipe off our recipe here. And we'll be just fine. <laughs> it's not something that won't get taken care of in the laundry. That's right. So, so what you did, you did, you want to spray your pan or grease it, you know, before you do that. And then we're going to um, just add our pumpkin mixture into the our pan. Okay. And then uh, the cake mix, we're just going to sprinkle that on top of it and add you know, the butter and... So the you pan. don't really have a crust with this. Basically, Correct. Basically, it's like... Yes. But this is excellent. Yes. So I'll let you get the butter <laughs> in case I get dangerous. <laughs> okay. So we do have that mixed well here. And so then we just want to pour that in here. And this makes a very generous dessert too. It, it is. You could definitely uh, make that your main dessert for a Thanksgiving dinner or, you know, I don't know. We really like pumpkin. We like love pumpkin pie and pumpkin bars and stuff. But for some reason, it seems like it's more of a, it's more of a holiday between right, Thanksgiving that, and Christmas type. We don't do it a lot. And maybe that's what makes it uh, extra special too, because it's something you don't eat a lot of, so when comes the holidays, it's a treat to have right. that. So um, this would be a nice variation of, you know, a pumpkin pie. Okay. So we're going to just sprinkle that over that. And this is a whole yellow cake mix. Yes. So this is basically making the streusel. I mean, that's, that's what this basically is, what we're doing right now. Yes, you're correct. So we're going to just take a fork here and we're going to just kind of even that out a little bit. And then, like I said, we do want to push that down into the batter after we get it spread out kind of evenly here. So then, oh, where's my cup of pecans here. I'm going to put the pecans on on top and uh, before I put the butter on it and uh, then we'll push that down a little bit in, into the cake. Okay. And we put the oven on. I put that on at um, 350. So we got the oven heated at 350 already. So let's just take that down and push it a little bit in here. But you know, your wet ingredients, that's going to just make your uh, the you know, the cake mix, yes. it's just going to 
uh, come up and you, you won't have that dry look right and stuff. So, because like I said, we're not mixing the cake up with any other ingredients and that because we got all our liquids on the bottom. So then we're going to drizzle that with three fourths cup butter. And now, so just pour that over that. Okay. That looks really, it's going to be delicious. It is delicious. Okay, Definitely so let's is. put that into the oven. Like I said, I've already got that at 350. Okay. So we're going to put that on for 60 minutes. And definitely before we take it out, we're going to double check it, you know, because we might need to go a couple more minutes. You don't want to just go exact. You always want to double check anytime you make a cake or whatever to see if they say 30 minutes or 35. Always check it because it can vary and ovens vary and stuff. So, right. you know, you don't want it underdone. Okay. So now we're going to make the one pot stuffed peppers. Okay. And that, and this makes it so much easier than trying to stuff peppers. And it takes a lot less time to bake. So I'm going to start with a nice big skillet here. And I'm going to just put a little bit of olive oil in there. Just drizzle a little bit. About two tablespoons or so. Okay. And then we're going to add our... Uh, pound of ground beef and we just want to get that uh, fried up and cooked and then we're going to add our you know green peppers and onion and then we're going to add all our other liquid ingredients and because we're using a cup of long grain uh, hard rice it's not minute rice so once then we're going to let that simmer about 20 minutes okay so it's a matter of just getting all your ingredients together and uh, serving about 20 minutes. How much quicker than you can you have that for stuffed peppers? Right. Well, you have the the taste of stuffed peppers. It's a it's an excellent mm -hmm. dish, but you, but you don't have to worry about it taking the preparation time. Yeah, that's and you what you're eliminating here. Is right. That prep time. Even though stuffed peppers, they're so pretty. And yeah. if you have the time and you want to be a little yeah. bit more fanciful with your dinner, mm -hmm. by all means, but. you don't do that and stuff. But uh, I think even the kids would probably eat this better than, you know, the right. pepper itself mm -hmm. and that. So you, you have a little bit of different um, flavor. You know, the pepper, when you're baking it, it kind of cooks up and soft, and this is in, just all mixed in there. And it's, you know, I really like it very well. I mean, I think it's a great way to uh, have that stuffed pepper taste. So we'll just get that a browning here. Okay. That'll yeah. take a few moments. Yeah, it, it will. Okay, our um, hamburger is brown and all broken up, so now we're going to add, um, I got three uh, bell peppers that I cut up. Okay. And I didn't chop them real fine, and you don't need to chop them real fine. And that, and then one uh, onion that I cut up. Okay. There we go. And two cloves of garlic. So we'll put that in there. And we're gonna mix that up here, get that well blended. Okay. And then we'll just be adding our other ingredients. And viewers might think, oh, she's not using pepper and salt in this. But, you know, we're gonna use Italian seasoning and we have, you know, the chicken broth, the beef broth, and the W sauce. Yes. That you, got, you got a lot of salt right. sodium in those you do not need to add extra um salt in this at all i i know the first time that i made it i thought oh i don't know we might um, need that extra salt and then at the very end we're going to top it with cheese uh, uh shredded cheese and melt that in there and you know you got that there too so yeah. definitely um you want to hold off on that Okay. People that like that extra, they can add it at the table, but you know, you might, you know, you can't take out. So we get that just 
well mixed in there. And you know, we've got, I did just buy green peppers here. Okay. But if you want a little bit more mild <coughs> taste, I would uh, maybe get a red pepper or a yellow pepper. And, oh, yes. And absolutely. substitute it with a green. And it's certainly going to, uh, you know, be a little bit more mild with that. So, okay. Now we just got our peppers and onions just nicely mixed in there. So we're going to add our uh, other ingredients, uh, like a can of oh, your tomatoes, okay. your diced tomatoes. There we go. And then a can of eight ounce can of tomato sauce. Okay. And stuff. So, and then, like I said, we made our own chicken broth. So, and that's, it says like a 14 ounce can of that. So I'm going to pour a little bit in here to get the, all my tomato sauce out of here. We got that. And so we're going to just add that in there. And it says two teaspoons of the Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> oh, did I get it out right? I wouldn't count on it. But we put that in there. And then I'm going to add two, you know, a little bit of te uh, teaspoons of um, beef base. Okay. And if you don't have beef base, beef base and you just have chicken, just add a little extra chicken, you know, just for that little extra flavoring. Got that in there. And then we're going to add... A teaspoon of um, Italian seasoning. Okay. Or like I said, if you don't have that, just go ahead and uh, add the oregano. Because most of your Italian seasoning is oregano anyway. Okay. So we're going to get that mixed well, and then we're going to add our rice. And you have a lot of juice from your other ingredients so that that rice is going to cook up really it, nice. It will. And do we add the cheese on right away, or is that something that you want to cook it, and then just towards nope. the end we're going to add it? Nope. We're going to have simmer this for 20 minutes, and then we're going to put, add the cheeses and just kind of take it off the burner or just actually turn the heat off and put let it melt okay. on top there. So. All right. Okay, so we got that. And you can definitely see that I have a pretty good-sized skillet here, and it is going to make a good-sized uh, dish. Yeah, once that, that rice soaks in, yeah, you're... It's going to absolutely be just perfect. So we just mix that up, and like I said, we're going to simmer this for 20 minutes, and probably once or twice in between, you might want to just stir it. Okay. You know, while you're letting it simmer. But just get it mixed well. And I'm going to turn my... Burner down, like I said, a little bit more just to, for that simmering. And we're going to put our lid on here. And then we'll be back in about 20 minutes. All right, sounds okay. great. Okay, let's check our casserole here or our easy stuffed peppers. Looks great. Yeah, and that peppers are soft and ready to go. Yep, so it looks really good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to top that with, it says a cup and a half of cheese. Now, what do I have here? It's two cups. So, you know, it's a big skillet. I am just going to add that whole package there. It you can't really have too much cheese, can you? No, really can't. And you know when they say uh, to... We'll put that in and then we'll just take that fork and just spread that around. And it's a big, big uh, skillet full here. So really it's not too much cheese. So we're just going to turn the burner off at this time. And we're going to put the lid on and just let that cheese melt. And we only have seven more minutes for our pumpkin crunch. Okay. And when we're able to take that out, the cheese should be melted, ready to go. Perfect. So we will be back with our viewers shortly. Sounds great. Well, our buzzer is going off for our cake, so let's turn that off. And we're going to just open that up, and we're going to just double check it by, by touch to see if that is done. Whew, a little bit hot there. Okay. You know, it really feels nice to the touch, so let's take that out. It smells, it smells very mm. nice. It doesn't, and it's got a nice little crunch to the top there. 
So we're going to put that there. And like I said, it, oh, that feels really, really nice. So that's going to be a wonderful dessert. I know it's really hot. It's going to be kind of hot to, to kind of cut it and take it out. But what I would do with this is serve it with your favorite topping, you know, put mm -hmm. some uh, whipped cream on it or whatever. How about some whipped cream and a little caramel sauce on that? We'll yeah. Top that. that, that would, would be really wonderful. make it a special treat for, you know, any holiday, but any time. Absolutely. So now let's go over and let's see what our, uh, oh, hey, look at this. That is done. That is done. That uh, cheese has just melted and looks absolutely wonderful. In fact, I'm going to use this to be able to take this out. Let's put that on there. Oh. It smells good. Doesn't it, though? And, you know, you could easily top this off with, uh, with some homemade baked bread or oh, rolls absolutely. or breadsticks, anything like that. And then we'll look at our cake. I probably will still need this mitts here. Just to, <laughs> I would think so. Just a feature, you know. <laughs> I know and, you're superwoman mom, but I think you would yeah, get burned. I, I <laughs> would, but it just makes a really nice crunch on there. So I think the, the nuts do add a nice finishing touch to that. Right. But, and unless you have an allergy. Uh, right. And <laughs> my little granddaughter, your daughter, I would just leave a corner without it, wouldn't I? You did forget that, though. I Oh. Huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. She'll forgive you, I'm sure. Oh, all right. <laughs> to get these recipes, just go to Consolidated's website, www.ctctel.com. Thank you, Alice, for submitting your pumpkin recipe. I know it's going to be absolutely fabulous. As always, thank you to the workshop for being our sponsor. Join us next time on Cooking Right.